I am Suzanne Dumouchel. I have a PhD in literature and I am associate researcher at the Institute of Communication Science in the CNRS. I'm a member of the Daria Coordination Office as a program implementation officer. I do research on digital humanities, the theory especially, and the mediation of knowledge in virtual environments. In that perspective, I focused on research infrastructures as virtual environments, because they are digital and distributed organization. I have two main skills, management of the structure with my colleagues of the DCO and a scientific viewpoint with my background and my research. More concretely, I work on macro-level challenges to the sustainability of the ERIC, especially in terms of internal communication, sharing knowledge, and of research policy to develop the ERIC as well as to answer to European SSH research and needs. I'm involved in DARIA, Digital Research in Arts and Humanities. DARIA is a pan-European infrastructure for arts and humanities scholars working with computational methods. It supports digital research as well as the teaching of digital research methods. People in DARIA provide tools and share data as well as know-how. They organize learning opportunities for digital research methods, like workshop and summer school, and offer training materials for digital humanities. DARIA aims at providing what you need. Whether you are an experienced digital researcher, a scholar seeking to apply digital methods for the first time, or a citizen interested in modern arts and humanities research. Well, outreach means the visibility of the concerned object, the knowledge people have of it. This is the branding part. Outreach can be defined thanks to the words which come to your mind when you think of a society or a brand. Is it serious, fun, old, young, open or secret, ecological, reasonable, and so on? The impact implies having an action on people or things. This is more about the role, the efficiency. This is like the influence. Of course, both of them are linked. What is difficult is to distinguish one from the other for a small part of the audience. One could say that the outreach is for everybody without distinction, and the impact is only related to the identified stakeholders. We want to have an impact on them, but we want to develop outreach for a larger audience. But there is a butterfly effect. So sometimes, in a specific sector of the audience, you can have an impact while you think there will be only outreach. For example, when thanks to the outreach, what you did gave some ideas to another team in another part of the world and that they want to create something similar. This is a kind of impact because it has given some ideas or new perspective. In Daria, as well as in other RIs, the outreach can be done in several ways, such as external communication, partnership and relationships, events, and everything which helps to, bring, to build a brand, Web, website, social networks, logo, and so on. On the contrary, the impact is more difficult to define. It's easy when you consider the people who visited your website, your followers on social networks, who attended your events, training, conferences, workshop. It becomes not so easy when you impact people you don't expect to and you don't know, like the previous example when you become a kind of model or anti-model. In the context of European projects, when you are a partner of a project, you may not have impact on the others. It could be only outreach. Creating impact or RI needs to define the different circles of stakeholders you have. From the inner circle, easier to know and to keep in touch with, to the larger, which are much more difficult to evaluate and to understand. Impact means you want to change something in the life, attitude, perspective of someone or a group. This can be done by adding some skills, training for example, 
by sharing information, by thanks to communication, or by suggesting other way of doing as a model and thanks to workshop. I think these are the three main types of impact you can have. I would say that to develop the outreach, you need to think of the keywords you want to highlight. You need to choose them carefully and then to draw a picture or to tell a story with them. This story must be developed in the logo, the colors, the how you speak and to whom, the kind of partnership, the kind of employees and their attitudes. This is the outreach part. So this is not the fact of being everywhere at all times but when, where, why, and how. This implies choosing and referring to specific guidelines. This is totally different regarding the impact. The first impact could be to see if the keywords you have in mind for your RI are close or not to those your audience already has. This can be measurable, and this is the first step in knowing if the message is well understood. Most of the time, Impacts are limited to numbers. Of course, it's easier and comfortable to have measurable indicators, but sometimes these are very poor. For example, you can say, yes, one of my criteria is that I have reached 21 people for this masterclass. But for European infrastructure, this number can't be a source of satisfaction. But if those 21 people then talk about what they did to their colleagues, partners, friends, and so on, this becomes outreach, and this can be interesting for the visibility of the brand. Another type of impact is related to digital networks. Visitors on a website, number of clicks, number of likes or retweets, number of followers, that's useful but not in and of itself. Sorry. Indeed, if you compare your results with those of a Hollywood star, these are not good. You need to define some comparison with other arrives, for example, or other international structure, and regarding a certain period of development or certain criteria. For example, if your younger arrives, array has higher numbers than an older one, this can be significant. The contrary is significant too, but not as good news. What is important when you want to measure impact is to define criteria, of course, which should be organized following the type of impact you have, but much more to define a comparison for each of those impacts. If Coca-Cola compares its results with those of a French cola made in Brittany, this would be ridiculous. This is not significant, so we don't do that. Indeed, we need to measure impact regarding our perspectives or our progress concerning a previous period. This is not wrong to do also, but we need to measure our array against other ones. Not as if you were in a competition, but to be inspired by the others. I would add that I don't like the expression measure impact. This brings us to numbers and quantifiable results. This is a bit tricky, because we can interpret numbers in different ways and therefore hide another reality. Impacts can be defined by saying how things have changed, for example. When someone has visited your website, this doesn't mean it has changed something for him. Maybe the information he read was not new. The same is for people who have retreated something. Those results show you are visible. This is part of the outreach, actually. But if, if you can find a way to evaluate how your audience, generally speaking, has changed, thanks to your action, this is the best. For example, you start to build your community with some needs, some characteristics, and two years later, your community, better structured, has benefited from your experience and has other needs. It has developed other projects thanks to what you did. This is a great impact. This can be done by defining different circles of stakeholders. The ones who benefit directly from services, for example, 
the ones who see or consider how things are done for their own structure, which can be built on the same model or not. And a third one, the ones who find some ideas, suggestions, thanks to your activity. Maybe more than those can be found, it's just some example. This last question is a bit hard to answer. I'm not sure there are some barriers, just the need to take care of the criteria and their implementation. The necessity for assessing the success of the array has two reasons. Considering if the array is successfully doing the job for what it, has, it was created, this is the evaluation part, and helping the array to reach its own objectives and to develop further ones. The first point must be carried out thanks to the impact and outreach viewpoint. But the second one can find other ways of development. Examining the impact is efficient, but it's not the only possibility. Evaluation is not always an answer to go further and to do better. Most of the time, actors of ERICS have already identified weaknesses and strengths. Sometimes they're can, they can make some change by themselves, but sometimes they need some training. If the aim of the impact evaluation consists in helping the RI to grow, an alternative would be to professionalize the RI, for example, regarding their organization, what they are supposed to do, and the training of people inside. Another alternative would be to clarify the national and European part of ERIC member. This can be very complicated for a member of an ERIC to both think in national impact and European ones. Sometimes those can be different, even contrasted. The legal status of an ERIC can be a kind of barrier too. For business models, for example, we know that a nice business model might create impact and outreach. Actually, if we enlarge the question, there can be some constraints, but it forces Eric's to be more ambitious and innovative. And I would like to conclude on the fact that we can't imagine how important the team is for impact and outreach. As a paradox, to develop those points, you also need to work on the internal aspect of the Eric.